Hey, so welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make that parallax effect that you saw at the start. Now, parallax effect is just an effect that you create normally with um, one image and you break it down into two or three layers, normally two layers, and you move them at the same time in different directions to give you the sort of movement um, or, or the, the the, the appearance of it moving. Now the way we're going to do it, I've seen lots of them in in um, in sort of Microsoft applications, if you will, using Photoshop and Sony Vegas. But I'm going to show you how to do it in Pixelmator and FCPX. So you will need Pixelmator and FCPX. If you haven't got FCPX, you can easily achieve this, the second part of it, in Motion as well. So let's get on and do it. I'm going to do it with this um, lovely background image here of this this car. And what I'm going to do is press Command Plus on my keyboard just to zoom in because I am going to cut the car out of this image. And the way I'm going to do that is with my tools, my tools here. I'm going to go and select my lasso tool from the um, from the tools menu. And then I'm going to left click and I'm just going to cut around. I'm not going to be extremely careful. I'm just going to cut around the outside of this main part of the image now this would be good if you um, you know you can do it with your own images and I would suggest if you're gonna try it with your own images you can do it with still images because I'm obviously clearly this vehicle is moving nowhere and it is very stationary but I would, I would so, sort of suggest doing it with action shots you know like like skiing shots or um, maybe motorcycle if you have if you you know people who use motorbikes a moving motorbike that you know you get quite a good quite a nice effect if you um, a good way to do it is um, is is if you if you've recorded a motorcycle moving take a screenshot of the middle part of the movie split the movie or split the um, yeah split the movie split the recording and do this in the middle of the recording so it goes from fast to slow and so you could stop the music put some music along it and stop the music so it'd be quite cool to do that. I might even look at doing that in a tutorial, actually. So if anybody's got any sort of motorcycle footage that I could use, you notice the more I click, the more control I've got over the curves or the bends in the in the image. And then when you finish, you get this finish selection. Left click to finish the selection. Now what we're going to do, once we've finished the selection, I can go ahead and select my move tool again and press command minus on my keyboard to zoom back to a um, uh, an acceptable size on the image. Then I'm going to press command C to copy my selection. So this copies my selection. And then I'm going to press command V and look what happens up in my layers. I get this new layer, I'm going to double click it and I'm going to call it the car. So if I remove the tick from the background layer, you notice I've just got the car that I've cut out. So now I can press Command D to deselect my selection. So now I've just got the car. So I'm going to highlight, or turn my background layer back on, turn my car layer off, and make sure I highlight my background layer in my layers pane. Otherwise, I'm going to be editing this part. And nothing would edit because it's turned off. If it was turned on, it would edit. But if it's turned off, it won't, you won't be able to edit it anyway. So now with my background layer selected, I'm gonna to go to my repair tool and I'm gonna zoom in again. I'm gonna go command plus. Um, and up here you'll notice that I can change the diameter of my repair tool. Once I've got it selected in my tools, I can change the diameter of my repair tool. I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit so I can see all of the car. And I'm and again, this is not really careful, but I am just gonna Go around the outside and cut out again or highlight all of the car. And again, you would just do this with the main parts of your image. So it's just a bit like colouring in. However, on this colouring in, it doesn't matter too much if you go over the lines. But don't try and go, you know, purposely too much over the lines, but it's, it is, you know, it's, it's it's fine to sort of go over a little bit. So I'm going to cut all of this out, or highlight it all.
like so. I'm gonna do it just keeping my my finger down on the left um, on the left click. Again, if you're doing it on a trackpad, you need to use two hands on the trackpad or likewise on the mouse pad. Just colour it all in nicely like this. Make sure you've got no little bits sticking out, you know, like this bit, like, like you've got a little bit like that. Don't just colour it all and then release the left click. And you'll get the little repairing um, sort of loading screen coming up and then it will remove that image for you. Now, this is nowhere near as good as what you can do in Photoshop, but it's okay because I'm going to turn this car image back on, right? And when we're in, um, when we're in, we're using it as two images. So when we're in Pixel Matter, sorry, when we're in FCPX, we can do a few tricks to get rid of these blurs and, you know, look, if you look closely, just the blur around the outside. Um, so now what we're going to do, we're going to save this as two images. So I'm going to turn off my background image go back to my car and go file export now the main part of your image must or the, the main part that you've just cut out must be saved as a PNG otherwise you're gonna have to try and screen blend it and it won't fit nicely it won't go nice so save it as a PNG export it as a PNG next call it whatever you want Maserati outline PNG saving it to my desktop export that and likewise then turn the car off Turn the background layer back on and again file export now you can do this one as a JPEG <clears throat> just to make the file a little bit smaller and again export just to the same place wherever it is you want to um, underscore BG background and just um, just export that so now I've exported those images I'm gonna go over into FCPX and import those images into FCPX so okay, here we are in FCPX, and you'll notice that I have imported both my images in. The way to import them, just press, press Command I on your keyboard, navigate to where you've saved them, and click Import. So um, I'm going to drag my Maserati background into my timeline, and it is it's coming at 9.2 something seconds long. It doesn't matter how long; it's up to you how long you want to make it. And then I'm going to drag the Maserati outline. Um, and if it's not correct, just just change the the size or the, the the length of of what you want them to be. Now you notice in my um, in the background it doesn't fit the the image. There's there's a couple of ways you can do this. The easiest way I find is to select the background image, open the inspector, go to the trim, drop it to crop, and it will crop the image for you. But you notice it's changed the background image and not the um, the car itself so if you just do the same to the car then the, it will put it back to its original image as well so it will match the the foreground image let's call it the car to the background image the Maserati background image so now how to achieve the parallax effect like I said it's moving two objects from this the same image in different directions at the same time so let's move the car first so Let's go to the transform tool, select the car here in the timeline, just move up a little bit in your timeline, select the transform tool, click plus, add a keyframe, to add a keyframe to the size of the car as it is, move up the way in your timeline, and then we're just going to drag these little blue lines and make the image bigger, like so, but not too much bigger, and then we're also going to move it slightly to the left but just slightly to the left. Now with the background image, I'm gonna scroll back to the start, highlight the background image. With the background image, I've still got my transform tool selected. I'm gonna click plus, add keyframe, drag it up to the end of the timeline and drag it out the way like so. So make it wider and higher, but not too much. If you overdo it, it won't you won't get the the, um, the the correct effect. Now, click done once you're done, and then just play through your timeline just to make sure that you're happy with the effect. And yes, we're happy with that effect, and it looks quite cool. Now, there is a temptation to here start adding effects to to the image itself. What I would generally do before I would add effects to the image itself, I would export it 
So it's one movie or one image, one moving image, one parallax effect. And then I would import it back in and then add the effects to the image as a whole. And I think that's the most effective way to do it. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I hope you found this helpful and um, I'll, I'll catch you soon. Thank you.